Y'all, I could go for hours talking about the different things that we, that God did for us. We'll save that for another time. Yeah. They kept telling me I'd never drive again, but I had a man, a name of Roger Cheshire, that would not accept that. Mm -hmm. He had gone through a similar thing, but his was a horse that crushed his pelvis, and the doctor told him he'd never be able to work again or do anything. But when the tornado hit back a few years ago and come to come over us, knocked down a bunch of trees, he was out here cutting trees. And I was hauling limbs, <laughs> piling them up out there. He stopped his chainsaw and I thought he'd broken a chain and he'd come over to me and he looked at me and he said, he said, Arthur, we're not supposed to be doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be able to walk and bend over and pick things up, but you're out here doing it. He looked at me and he said, you know our two favorite words. And I looked at him and I said, yes, Roger, but God. I said the two most beautiful words in the English language is but God to me. Mm -hmm. 2018, I thought everything was going great. I was supposed to have had a colonoscopy, which I kept putting off. So they went in and they did surgery. They cut out 10, uh, 10 inches of my colon and about three inches of my small intestine. And he said, he looked me square in the eye and he said, I don't know any other way to put it except for it was malignant. Mm -hmm. Dr. Morgan got it all. I said, so it's over? And he said, no. He said, uh, you need to, I've set you up an appointment with Dr. Nair, and you'll need to go see him, and you need to do some, uh, do some preventive chemo. So I was thinking, well, I'll go, they'll do some preventive chemo for a month or two, and everything will be fine. Well, they, I did. I went, I talked to Dr. Mayor. He said, you make up your mind as to what you want to do. The same day that I was told that, my son told me, called me and told me, he said, Daddy, y'all can let everybody know now that uh, because we were able to tell April's mom and dad, now, Y'all need to let everybody know that uh, y'all are going to be grandparents. Hmm. And so I started to thinking, I got to stay around for that precious little girl. But right after George, Dr. George Smith left the room, yeah. in walks Harold and Erlene Key. I mean, just like anybody who knows Erlene knows what kind of pain she's in all the time. Mm -hmm. And she had told, she had actually told Harold the day before where I want to get up and get dressed and go up to the hospital. God's got a message for Brother Arthur. And Harold said, well, by the time you get dressed and everything, get a shower, get dressed and everything, it's going to be too late to see you. They came walking in right after Dr. Smith walked out and unrolled out of there. She looked at me and she walked over and she took my hand and she got this close, her face this close to me and she said, Brother Arthur, night before last, her daughter said, yesterday God told me when I was praying for you to come up here and let you know that 
This is not unto death. It is a it is a test of my yet another test in your testimony. Hmm. Right after he walked out, right after he left out of there. Now, if you don't think that set me on fire, mm -hmm. it did. And so I told LaDonna, I said, well, we're going to do what needs to be done because whatever it is, it's not going to kill me. But it's just something else that I can add and tell about what God, about how God is working mm -hmm. and how God still works today. Healing that was not provided for just a short time. Those stripes cover every single illness that the devil can come up with, every disease, every broken bone, everything has already been covered. And all we got to do is just say, Yes, Lord, I accept. Yes, Lord, I believe. That's all he asks. Is that we is that we look at we look at it and we say, God, you've already taken care of it. You took care of it even before salvation. Which is something that that I haven't that I had never thought about before. Mm -hmm. But Jesus took thirty nine stripes the day before they put the young on the cross. Yes. So that is the importance of our of healing. God places on our healing. We were healed before we were saved. We were given our healing before we were given salvation. And when Jesus hung on the cross the next day, he, bled, he was bleeding from the scars on his back already. He was bleeding from the crown of thorns that they placed on his head. He was bleeding from the nails in his hands. Mm -hmm. He was bleeding from the nails in his feet, mm -hmm. the nail through his feet. Mm -hmm. And as he hung there, he wasn't bleeding enough for him. And so the Roman soldier took the spear mm -hmm and opened up his side. They never did anything like that. They never even put nails in anybody else's hands. They, they were tied up there and allowed to just linger. But they wanted Jesus to die quick. And even as he was doing that, he was, he was saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They know nothing about what they're doing. And so he goes, he goes from there. All the blood drains from his body and then the scripture says, out of his side flowed living water. The blood and then the living water, which is the Holy Spirit. So he provided all of that in within a two-day period. He told his disciples, he told his disciples later, he said, just tarry. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to send and I'm going to send the comforter mm -hmm. to you. And they uh, didn't understand. They never understood it until the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. What he meant. I'm, that I'm going to send the comforter until they... Out of that came the biggest revival. Mm -hmm. I mean, what would Pastor Chris... What, how, would, how do you think it would affect Pastor Chris if he preached in the stadium up here and 3,000 people were there and 3,000 people got saved? Pretty awesome. I said, These men are not drunk as you suppose. Yeah. <laughs> We're not drunk. Yeah. We're just, we, we have just been uh, given 
a way to speak to God on your behalf without knowing anything about what you're going through. And we now have the power, the same power that Jesus had through him, in his name, we can do we can do what he said we could do. Mm-hmm. And God has opened that to me through this through this cancer. He said, he's told he had asked me why. He said, I just don't understand why. That it's not being that that the that the cross is not being preached like it used to be from the pulpit. Why? And I said, God, I've wondered why that pastors now teach, preach on today's events rather than the events that took place on Calvary in the day before Calvary. Why are we not why are we not preaching the cross in Christ crucified? Why do we have to get out of church on Sunday and get to the restaurant before the Baptists do? <laughs> I mean if we don't get out of there by twelve o'clock, everybody's sitting there. Yeah, that's true. What what, what the man is it? We live in a When are they gonna shut yeah. up so I can go to lunch? Yeah. I remember the days whenever a pastor, I mean, whenever an evangelist would come in and he would look square at the women and he would say, oh, I just want to let y'all know before we get started tonight, I mean today, if you've got a roast in the oven, it's going to burn. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd see several women get up, drive home, or go home. Then you'd see them come back in the door later. They done went home and turned the oven off. Mm. Because they knew that he was not going to stop until God told him to. Mm -hmm. I can remember going to church on Sunday night and not leaving until sometime Monday morning. Mm. And still getting up the next day on that Monday morning, getting cleaned up, dressed, and standing and walking almost a mile down to the end of the to, to the end of our driveway to catch the school bus to go to school mm. because you wasn't going you wasn't staying home from school mm. you were going to school and we don't see that today because we want ins- instantaneous salvation. We want instantaneous everything. Mm-hmm. I want my healing, and I want it now. Mm-hmm. It's we're not kind of a, we're kind of a fast food society. It's like yeah. your your way right away. You know that's kind of what yeah. we've been catered and you to. You can't have life. it with God. You, you can't, can't have yeah. it your way. Yeah. Everything has to be God's way. It's kind of like oh, uh, back years ago. We had a place here called Lipsy's. Lipsy served three things. Chili, chili dog, and Lipsy burgers. If you went in there or ordered a burger, you could get a double burger. But it's gonna have a burger patty, a bun, onions, mustard, that's all, other than the chili. <laughs> he had a shirt that he wore. Did the double have two patties though? Yeah, the double had two patties. Okay, sweet. His hot yeah. dog, yeah. mustard, I got it. Yeah. iced onions, Yeah. chili on a bun. Mm. I'm getting hungry here. <laughs> and I'm talking about some of the best chili you ever ate in your life. Mm. But you couldn't get the recipe from it. 
And he, when, when ever Burger King came up with their slogan, uh, you can have it your way, mm -hmm. he had him some t-shirts made. Then it's either my way or the highway. <laughs> yeah. You ain't getting no lettuce and tomato on your burger. You getting chili, onion, and mustard. That's what. <laughs> no, no mayonnaise, no ketchup. <laughs> he didn't even do fries. He put bags of chips out there, and you could choose a bag of chips. <laughs> That was that was just the way it is. God is that way. You're not getting everything my way, your way. You're That's getting right. it my way and my time. Yeah. He, and he's you're going to like it. Yeah. Right. You're going to like the results if you believe. Right. If you don't believe, you ain't going to like the results. Yeah. Because sometimes the results. You didn't want to even you didn't you you didn't even want to think about it. Mm -hmm. because it was usually it was usually death and living in in the pits of hell the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. I mean the rest of eternity. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm too hot in nature to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be where there's a cool breeze blowing. That's why I like a shade tree on the side of the river. Yeah. Or on the edge of a pond or edge of a lake. Mm -hmm. And as a lot of people do, sit out there in either a chair or on a bucket. <laughs> With another bucket over here to, <laughs> to put my bait in and to put my fish in. Yeah. But you know, it's, you gotta, I don't, I don't want to burn up. Yeah. I don't even like sitting around campfires unless it's cool, unless it's ice cold. Mm -hmm. But God's provided all our, he, He's provided all everything we need. Yeah. He is Jehovah Jireh. Yes. Uh, he is Jehovah Rapha. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether y'all have ever read it or not, but Paul, right there behind you somewhere, there should be a book called Could You Not Tarry One Hour yeah. by Larry Lee. Get you a copy of it and read it, or else download it and read it. Mm -hmm. He tell, he in there, he outlines the, way, the Lord's Prayer. I just... I just had Madonna pull it out so I could reread it again. But if you pray the Lord's Prayer the way Larry Lee prays the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. right? Oh, it won't take you just just a short time. It will take you an hour because he don't just say Our Father. Mm -hmm. He starts to name everything. You know, he starts to calling out the names of God in the meeting. Yeah. God has, I have gone through, and we have gone through over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to highlight. Yeah. It's just what God has, what I have gone through, and what I have learned from God through these times and through the and through everything is that it is not in our time mm -hmm. it's his time he will heal but it's not in our time yeah he chooses the time and it's the right time mm -hmm. we are all part of a body that's more important and more lively than the body that, that the body he gave us we're part of the body of Christ, mm -hmm. and if we don't allow, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to tell us to, if we don't do what God mm -hmm. tells us through the Holy Spirit. Then we become it, it becomes a dead body. Yeah, and a dead body is good for nothing. 
Yeah. So we need to allow God to tell us. Yeah. Exactly. What do you want after we after we pray and ask Him? Mm-hmm. What for things and, and before that we praise Him, and then we ask Him for. And if it's His will, mm-hmm. and it's always His will to give us the desires of our heart. Yeah. It's just that it's got to be in His time and not our time. Go ahead. All right, I said before that I was a meat cutter and market, yeah. assistant market manager to market manager. <laughs> but for three and a half years, yeah. I had an idiot for a boss. Y'all, I worked for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Every That's morning, right. I would get up <laughs> at about yeah. five o'clock in the morning. I would drive from from here to Parker's Chapel mm-hmm. down to Bernice, Louisiana, and I would go in and I would cut meat. And I had a little service counter that I, and, but I'm not. I had some of the best customers in the world. Had the best business partner in the world. Mm-hmm. I worked with a man by the name of Tommy Welch, who had a little mom and pop store down there, but he only sold frozen meat up until I put my meat market in. But the reason I say I had an idiot for a boss was because that's all I had to depend on was myself. Mm-hmm. I couldn't take a vacation. At that time, I had a daughter who was wasn't quite Bethany wasn't quite a year old, was she? Three. I don't think she was. She was. She was maybe she might have been close to two at that time. But anyway, I had heard about this, and so I just wanted to take the opportunity mm-hmm. to see what I could do in my own business. And for three and a half years. I never file, I mean, every time I filed an income tax return, my accountant would look at me and she'd say, how did y'all live? Mm. <laughs> Less than $9,000. Mm-hmm. But if it hadn't been for swapping meat for groceries mm-hmm. and doing things like that, we couldn't have made it. Everything that Tommy got out of my meat market, it he wrote it down, and I would get so I would get that many groceries. I helped him, I helped him on stock day, mm-hmm. and I would help, and he would help me out some when I needed it back there. How many days? He helped me out a lot. I worked seven days a week, twelve hours a day, mm-hmm. three and a half years. Three I drove. We took off Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter. And when Donna told me she was pregnant with Jared, I said, What? (laughs) She said, Yeah. And we'd been praying about another, or she had been praying for another child. And she had Jared named before before he was ever born. Because God had told her, I'm going to give you a son. Yep. And so he was named before he was ever conceived. Mm-hmm. Huh. I was praying for his wife before he was ever conceived. And he got the wife himself. But anyway, we <laughs> we, don't, we don't do things. <laughs> we, try, we, try to, yeah. we try to do everything with prayer. Yeah. yeah. But that was my one time Ishmael. You know, I uh, Ishmael time huh. because you know Ishmael. You know the story of Ishmael. You, you sound like you slept with Hagar. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ishmael. Isn't that, the, isn't that what you're talking about? No, I'm sorry.